Today we're talking about health and pregnancy and a report that pregnant women may want to be sticking to filtered water. A new study says that fluoride in drinking water could have impact, lasting impacts on a child's development. So for more on this, we're going to turn to our medical expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, and what these questions raised regarding pregnant women and fluoride. I mean, I'm surprised by this. Surprising for sure, but we know that fluoride is added to our drinking water. It's actually one of the largest public health efforts because it protects our teeth, it protects against tooth decay. But this study really looked at if getting fluoride during pregnancy increases risk of problems in young children. So it looked at urine samples of women kind of late in their pregnancy, third trimester, and then looked at surveys asking them how their kids behaved. And they were 83% more likely to have behavioral issues and neurodevelopmental issues if their mom had high levels of fluoride in her urine during that third trimester. But so how do you feel about that type of science? Because I'm curious when you say how they feel about how their kids behave. Um, well, my <laughs> mom might not think I was the best behaved kid ever, but if you're going to... No, go, you, Tom. <laughs> well, well, you don't need to get into trouble. I really settled down later in life. No, but it, there is, that makes it a little vague. It's not like it's a litmus yes. test. Yes, so sort. very important point, Tom. So these, this is self-described mom's behavior, right, on, of the child. These are Hispanic moms in Los Angeles, largely Hispanic moms. So could there be other factors that could be leading to behavioral problems? It was one single urine done in the third trimester. It wasn't monitored in 24 hours. It mo wasn't monitored over the duration. So we're not entirely sure whether this is a causation, meaning the fluoride is causing the problems, or this is an association, just a marker. But we do know in a prior study published in JAMA, they, they showed that moms who had excess fluoride intake actually had kids with lower IQs. Now, that's a little bit more of an objective measure, so we can hang our hat on that. But it does raise the question of whether fluoride intake should be monitored during pregnancy. Yeah, we always think of the fact that whatever mom does, you're impacting your unborn child. But then you think about microplastics and all these reports about how bad that is and it's in everything. And if you're drinking, you know, filtered water, if you get a water bottle, no? <laughs> Such a good point. So in, in animal studies where they gave pregnant you know, animals uh, bottled water with microplastics in it, they found it in baby's tissue 24 hours later in all different organs. So we know that microplastics cross the placenta. We also know that bottled water has a lot of microplastics. In fact, a recent study looked at a liter of bottled water. It had over 240,000 microplastics. And so drinking out of a bottle, a bottle, plastic bottle, is really something we need to be more mindful of. Wow. Well, I'm just going to go home now. Like... <laughs> so what do we do about these things? Because we are becoming far more intelligent. The things that we study, we're also terrifying people when you start saying everything everywhere causes something and does something. I mean, it, is there too much? Well, I think we need to be mindful of our plastic exposure. So that's one thing we can do. So we're not microwaving in plastics. Mm -hmm. We're not heating things up in plastic cups. We're not pouring our coffee into plastic or styrofoam cups. These are things we need to be mindful of. I think we can also drink more tap water because that has less microplastics, although there's been some contamination as well. And we try to drink out of containers like um, stainless steel or glass because that's less likely to have plastic contamination. Tap water is good again? <laughs> Today we're saying it's good, yeah. So tap water has a whole host of other problems. In fact, just this morning there was a report about possibility of cyber attacks on some of the drinking water as well that the EPA has issued. But it has less microplastics compared to bottled water. Now we don't know if the bottled water, they're coming out of the bottle itself, it's the preparation of it, it's the filtration of it, or it's the source that they're getting it from. So that's all an area of investigation. But I don't want us to be terrified because so far the plastics research is still sort of ongoing and developing. We know sometimes it can cause trouble, end up in plaque, for example. Drink a lot of microplastics, you can get it in your plaque, but we're still Plaque learning. in your arteries, you not mean your yeah. teeth. You mean Sorry, in your yeah. arteries, yeah. yeah. So plaque, so there was a study a few months ago where they looked at, at individuals who had high levels of exposure to plastic and then looked at their arteries and their plaque, and not only did they have plastic in their plaque that they saw under the microscope, they actually had higher risk features, they had more clinical events. So that was wow. the first link potentially of this causing more trouble. This has been a great visit. No water, <laughs> no soda, no coffee. Let's drink the water. Let's just drink wine. It's just, no, it's oh, just oh. a glass. You do know <laughs> that the abs and nuggets lost this weekend. And we were kind of looking for something for us, a little Dr. more. Coley. It's a lot. So how about a, uh, drink a little bit of wine out of a glass Wine cup. Glass glass. Okay, I'm good. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. You can always find much more on this. And it is a serious topic. We know you want to talk to your doctor, especially pregnant moms. Um, uh, Dr. Coley's advice at 9news.com slash Dr. Coley.